This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. With licensed psychologist and guest John Delatory. The trial against Richard Allen, it is uh, coming shortly. We just uh, had a hearing the other week where a lot of the motions are still up for consideration, at least as of this time, by Judge Gull that were brought to the table. Uh, joining me to discuss some of that and the more than 60 confessions that were made by Richard Allen, Dr. Uh, John Delatore. Uh, John, uh, this is a, a, a very crazy story where there's so many tendrils as to what could have happened here, and it's a lot of conjecture. But you, let's start with the 60 confessions uh, over the course of 22 months in custody from a man who went from working at a CVS, having a family life, to suddenly being in solitary confinement 23 hours a day and being taunted by guards, not having access to his attorneys, eventually starts eating his own feces and then starts saying he killed these kids. Um, is that par for the course when, when you're under that sort of duress? Yeah, well, I, I, the, the short answer is yes. When it comes to <laughs> solitary confinement, just as a general, just as a general concept, it is extremely psychologically debilitating and should never under any circumstances be used uh, against another human being because you know, just take Richard Allen out of this. There are cases in which someone has been subjected to solitary confinement and they have in fact experienced um, psychological breakdowns in which they engage in peculiar behaviors that they hadn't done before. Now let's bring Richard Allen back in. I mean, I, I don't know this, this this also seems like a case that was, you know, derived specifically to for for a movie to be made, yeah. you know, five years from now. You know that this is specifically a uh, a case that is for a true crime docu series to to air on Hulu or something like that. Mm -hmm. this, there's there's just so much happening that it's that it's so theatrical and it's so dramatic. Is it possible that he experienced that breakdown? Of course, that it is. Is it, what does it say about him that he then has all these 60 confessions and that he's got all this other stuff happening? I, I mean, I, I don't know. Is, is I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, do I think he did it? I mean, sure. Yeah. Do I think he didn't do it? Yeah, probably. He probably didn't do it. It just, it's, it's, it's legitimately a toss up. And until the, the investigation is completed and the actual evidence against him is presented in public, mm -hmm. We don't actually know what the police know. No, uh, you're right. We don't have the probable cause affidavits. We don't know exactly what they were using to go in and say, yes, this is our guy. And that's why we have trials. But if we're just looking at this from, you know, a 10,000 foot overview, I mean, how likely is it? And let's assume there is no, no digital evidence. There's no Googling of, you know, how to kill or, or Odinism or anything from the part of, uh, of Richard Allen, uh, their defense has already said there is none. It doesn't mean that there there couldn't be. No defense attorneys will spin things different ways. But, you know, typically if you're going to make that statement and say there is absolutely nothing there, um, there may not be anything there. And that's usually a, a big factor in a lot of cases like this. So if, let's assume that there's no history of any sort of him interested in murder of anything of this nature and kids and nothing. Um, going from CVS in a family to going out for a walk one day, decide after leaving his mom's house, deciding to go kill two little girls, lay them in some sort of Odinistic ritual uh, setting, um, and then raise his hand and say, hey, I was over there. Uh, maybe I can help you. It doesn't make any sense psychologically as to where or why that would be happening, why one would go from that to this. Yeah, and... You know you know, let me let me dispel a myth uh, about. Although I'm pretty sure a, a commenter is going to say that I'm 100 percent wrong. Uh, people don't snap. Mm -hmm. No one ever just snaps. There is a buildup of stressors that occur that then compel someone to engage in a behavior that they previously hadn't done. Is it possible that someone like Richard Allen, uh, someone who seemingly was a family man and working man and, and whatever else? all of a sudden kill someone. Sure, but it was never all of a sudden. There had always been, at the very least, fantasy-type elements that the person was experiencing 
that got to a point where the fantasy was no longer fulfilling. So then they had to engage in the behavior. Generally speaking, that first time that you you break through the fantasy and engage in and acting out in contact defense, it's it's kind of disorganized and it it it, it, it may be planned, but there's still a, a chaotic element because because you haven't done it before, you don't know how someone you know your potential victim. You don't know how they're going to respond to your behavior. So there's always a bit of uh, flexibility that you need to have as part of your plan in order to uh, compensate for whatever the victim is going to do. As someone who has the sophistication to work a, a daily life and then out of nowhere find two victims and then out of nowhere be able to display those victims in some pseudo ritualistic type thing, which I, I mean. I I know that there's an expert out there that says that clearly that it is, but experts have a tendency of seeing things through their expertise only. Sure. Um, but that would that would be a level of sophistication that would indicate that this is not the first time the person has done this. Want more of the podcast without the ads? Then hit subscribe to the True Crime Today Premium Plus channel on Apple Podcasts. Try it now for three days absolutely free. You'll get access to all of our extended advanced ad-free episodes instantly. So you can binge without the break. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search and subscribe now on Apple Podcasts.